What's up everybody? I'm making this video to um, for anybody that asks me anything about Kenyan or anything pier fishing related. I've got some stuff laid out here that I'm gonna go through. Just show you what it does, what it what it's for and all that. But um we're gonna start off with rods and reels and then move on to tackle and rigs and uh, other things like gaffs but uh <clears throat> we'll go ahead and start off with the rods and reels this is what i personally use this is uh all discretional of course um whatever you use is, is your liking and your opinion this is what i've bought and this is what i like using i do not however like the squalls that well but they are a good reel anyways this rod right here is my pier and surf bottom fishing rod this is a 10 foot uh, pin fierce uh, combo that was a combo but uh, I put a 6,000 pin battle on it because the reel uh, is better suited, the size of this reel is better suited for the rod. Um, some other things I've done is when you buy this rod, it doesn't really have enough guides on it. It only has like four guides, and I've added a guide in between each guide. So if you see, this comes from Pin. That's their wrap. That's my wrap. Not much of a difference. I say I did a decent job on it. But again, that's mine. That's pins. That's mine. And so on and so forth with the rod. But moving on to a rig that I use on this rod most of the time. Like I said, this is a bottom fishing rod. Um, I made this rig. It is basically just a double dropper rig. Set the camera down for a second. I'm trying to get this off of the eye here. So I'm going to show you a better look at the rig. It's basically just a crimped snap swivel snap at the bottom pyramid weight, and then I tied a dropper loop. And then another dropper loop and then a swivel now what you put on the end of your dropper loop is up to you but I went with a small trout float or in strike indicator float for smaller fresh water I crimped it here put a bead here put the float bead and I crimped a snap a small snap to it and I put a small octopus hook I think that's a number two. I'm not sure. I did the same for here. And then the swivel is crimped to the rest of this. I believe this is 30 or 40 pound mono. Um, only mono I use for leader materials is Andy. I love Andy. Again, now brand choice is up to y'all. But this is my preference. But that's what I use for bottom fishing. And the floats, if you got really light bait, like a small piece of shrimp, the the bait will naturally want to do this in the water mm, excuse me but for that one that's pretty much it you know this rod has a lot enough action where you could put a heavy style plug on it and throw it on the surf for stripers and blues that would be a really cheap setup to go with that up north, but it works nonetheless. Moving on to the next rod in the row is my finder rod for pier and surf or backwater ways, inlets, stuff like that. It's a uh, simple, it's just a <clears throat> Abbey Garcia C3 6500. It's got a 65 pound Power Pro. And it is a seven foot six Abu Garcia Veritas 2.0 rod. 
um, it's the heavier of the seven sixes. And then the flounder rig is basically just a Carolina rig with a slight modification. Throughout this video, you will learn that I love using those little strike indicator floats because they tend to float the bait up. But the rig is simple. It's a Carolina rig. Got an egg sinker to a snap swivel, bead to protect the knot, and then you have a snail circle hook with a bead and a strike indicator, another bead that's crimped right here. Like I said, it floats it up, and this is 30 pound handy as well. You can put like a little live finger mullet, live Popeye mullet, live mud minna, live shrimp, and there's your finder rig. That's pretty simple enough to understand for that. Oh, and I better address it before people ask is. Ow, look, ow! Hook sharp. This is that right there. I tied into the bar of the reel so I can clip a safety clip to it on the pier so that my rod doesn't go flying over the reel. Let's see what's next. Uh, looks like you're next. Come on, don't fight me. This is the rod I take with me on the pier when I'm kinging. This is my bait rod. And my Spanish and blue rod is very light. I love this setup. It is a Pin Clash 4000. I'm missing the end cap on this one, but it's okay. It's a lovely reel. I love this thing. The drag is phenomenally smooth. It's got great drag pressure on it too. And this is a seven foot pin battalion. I think this is the fast. Yeah, this is extra fast. It'll throw up to an ounce. And I got the gotcha plug on here um, with a 40 pound mono leader to a swivel. And then this is 30 pound braid on the reel. That braid is actually pretty fresh. It's the only freshest braid I have. <laughs> on any of my rods and reels but you can put gotcha plugs on this you can you can even do a bottom rig mirror lures uh, the gulp baits anything you know it's a good rod to work the lure with I'm gonna skip the king stuff for now and move to the next one this rod's a good multi-purpose rod it's a heavy freaking rod 8,000 size fierce. It's a pin rampage seven foot rod. Um, I use this for cobia. I don't cobia fish much, but when I do, I'll use this. And I'll use this for offshore stuff too if I want to use spinning tackle. And uh, I'm pretty sure I got enough line on there to handle anything I want to get a hold of. This is a really good combo. All I said, the only downfall to it is heavy. I just got a bucktail in there for show. I don't have any decent cobia jigs, but if I saw a cobia real quick, I could throw that at it. Uh, the next one, I'm probably going to get hate for it. This is what I use for light shark fishing. I don't have my 9 on with me. I store it at the coast along with some other things. But this is a pin 6 alt special senator wide. I've got 500 yards of 50 pound mono and another 300 of 80 pound braid and it's still not even full. But the rod is a seven foot pin rampage. Again, it's a very heavy stout rod. It'll handy, handle anything I throw at it. I don't have a rig tied to this because I don't prefer having a rig tied to it at the moment until I get to where I'm gonna use it. And now we're on to the, my kinging stuff. This, I tied an anchor onto it for the video. 
is a 12 foot heavy pin carnage to surf. Absolutely love this rod. It's a stout rod. That's a six ounce anchor. This is a pin squall 15. I do not like the squall 15s. The dial mag set up on them is shit, but otherwise if you're learning to throw distance on a pier with a bait caster, this is a good way to go. Or buy an abu and have it mono mag. The line on this is 20 pound main line, and then I have a 60 pound shock leader on top. It's about two lengths of the rod and then eight wraps on the reel. And then the anchor. And this is a king anchor. What you do is you have this. It's about six ounces. It's five and a half ounces of lead and then give or take six ounces in, in the, the steel parts. But you take this, you tie it on to this, this rod, and you sling the dog crap out of it. Just throw it out on the end of the pier as far as you possibly can. Nine times out of ten, you don't have to throw it terribly far, but I'm the kind of person I like to fish away from everybody. And, you know, I'll throw 120, 130 yards off the end of the pier with it. I've made some amazing casts as well. I've, I've I've pushed about 150 yards with a few casts. I'll get lucky. That is basically the anchor rod setup for my kinging. I'm soon going to be switching to Fathoms, the Fathom series by Penn. Up next is my fighting rod. This is a vertical jigging rod, but it, it worked well. But this is a Penn Squall 40LD. It's a lever drag. Um, I think this is a six foot. Focus. Yeah, it's a six foot two vertical jig, but it works great. It's got enough backbone. I've caught my tarpon on this and my 30 pound king from Curry with this. It's got 25 pound mono. No shock litter, no nothing. Um, it's got about 450 yards of that on there. Um, but that's my go-to right now. I, do, I actually do like the lever drags of the pin squalls. As far as that thing goes, it, it yeah, <laughs> I have my opinions on that one. Here we're gonna move on to a king rig. This is a king rig. Let me give me a second so I can untangle it. Got it untangled. This is basically your king rig you'll see about anywhere. What it is, the way I do it, is three trebles that are haywire twisted. I get it to focus. That's my haywire twist. Some people say I do it wrong. It works for me. I haven't had a problem with it. But if you want to learn the proper way to do a haywire twist, just uh, type it in on YouTube. But it's three trebles on this end. Then. It's about five and a half to six foot of single strand hard wire to a barrel swivel. You want to get these wraps on here, you want to get these little loops as small as you can. Otherwise, I've been told you can't even see it. You don't want to crimp this stuff either. And that is the king rig basically. And what you do with that is you grab these which is a pop-off now a pop-off what it does is when you have your anchor thrown out there and it's sticking on the bottom real nicely it says you'll clip it you take that in and you'll clip it on the line like that 
but the first thing you do is you take it, let's see if I can do this with one hand, the swivel, you take these two wires right here, you pinch them together like so, you slide them through the top eyelet of the barrel swivel on your king rig. And when a fish gets on this and putting tension on it and this is clipped to the anchor line, this will it's hard to do with one hand. Eh. It'll pull out. It'll these two will come back together. The swivel will be free and you'll be fighting a fish. But you tie the king rig right here onto your fighting rod and then you clip this to it and then you run a live bait to that I prefer bluefish bluefish is my favorite bait to use as you can see I've got a ton of them I've got different shapes sizes and stuff I'm blind as a bat so I do use floats on my king rigs so I can see them you can keep in mind, I mean, these king rigs are going to be 50 yards off the end of the pier, and then you got glare of the sun and all that, and shit. And this is my pop off I use for when I have a lot of wind. This is a heavier weight, it stays down the line because wind can push your weight back up the anchor line. And this is something you will need if you are alone on the pier and you're the only one kinging and you actually do get a king. This is a gaff. Um, it's got uh, blah, 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 six prongs on it. Some people prefer different prongs and stuff like that. But uh, it's just a big lead steel tube, heavy as shit thing. Down there, these points are super, super sharp. And when, when you get the king close to the pier, you put this in the water and you pull the king next to it and then you jerk on this thing and then it gets stuck in the king like a gaff on a boat. And that's just another anchor. That's what they look like before they're folded out. But that is pretty much it, other than, you know, storage and stuff. I mean, if you are going to have a bunch of king rigs, you're going to need something like this. This is just a worm bag for bass fishing or soft plastics bag. I put all my king rigs and other uh, pre made rigs I have in here too, like finder rigs, bottom rigs, drum rigs, uh, fish finder rigs, anything. But most of it's king and uh, a few shark rigs are in there. Um, I'm not going to go open, open it and go through it because it is, it's a organized chaos in that bag. But that's pretty much it. I mean, pretty much all you will need for king though is an anchor rod, fighting rod, and bait rod. Given this current setup, when I bought it new, I've got about a grand in it. And most of the money was in this rod, that rod, and that reel. The pin clash. Uh, when I say rod, just the rod, this rod alone was about 250. That rod's about the same. And then that reel, when they, I bought the clash when they came out and they were pretty high. I cannot remember what I paid for it though. But that's pretty much it for this video. Um, please like, comment, share, subscribe for uh, more content on my channel. If you like this video, let me know. I can do more like it. Maybe a possible future to do more um, tackle uh, videos, like how to's and all that. I might not be the best voice on YouTube, but I'm practical. I share my opinion and I'll, I'll allow other people to have theirs. And what works for me works for me. What doesn't work for me may work for you. But y'all have a great day. I hope this helped. And uh, I hope to see you on the pier. Later, y'all.